What's going on everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about conduit fill. So what is the deal with conduit fill? Why do we even need to have a conversation about it? Well, A, it's because a lot of people don't know how many conductors they can stick in a piece of conduit. They end up just cramming as many in there as they can. That's not to code. And then in doing so, they end up damaging the insulation around the conductors as they're pulling them in. So the whole reason that the conduit fill uh, tables are in the code is to protect the conductor so that we don't damage the insulation. Now there are some people out there that will argue that uh, the reason that we only put a certain amount of conductors into a certain size conduit is that we need to allow air over those conductors to dissipate heat. I personally do not subscribe to that argument. I don't think that the amount of current on most conductors is at max value and I think that we use the D rating charts and the ambient correction factor charts in a different part of code to deal with heat. Um, that has nothing to do with these conduit fill charts. And I think that if the heat uh, portion, the argument was as big of a deal, I think that in chapter nine, it would specifically talk about the heat being an issue. It would talk about the amperage, uh, the capacity of every type of insulator to uh, handle a certain amount of heat, but there's just nothing in chapter nine or in Annex C in the conduit fill charts that has anything to do with heat. It's all about size. first thing we need to talk about is chapter nine, table one. So we're going to get our information, our basis for a 40% conduit fill from this table. It says if you're running over two conductors that you cannot fill that conduit more than 40%. So every example that we do going forward, we're going to use a 40% area as our basis for everything. So I just wanted you to know where I'm getting that information. All right. So there are three kind of areas, I guess, that you need to know that deal with conduit fill. The first is chapter nine, table one. Uh, the second, is chapter nine, table four. And the third is chapter nine, table five. So within chapter nine, there's three different areas. There's also one other area that deals with conduit fill, but that's more for our second example. Um, that's Annex C. So really with conduit, there's four different areas from chapter nine and uh, Annex C that you need to know deal with conduit fill. So our first example, we're going to talk about conductors that are of different sizes in the same conduit. Before I get into that, I want to give a special shout out to Rogers. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode. Uh, Rogers is a nationwide electrical contractor. They've got um, techs in almost every state. They do commercial service work, commercial construction. So um, if you're in residential or industrial and you're looking to do something different, you want to kind of get into the commercial side and you want to do troubleshooting and a lot of big projects, uh, construction, things like that. Check out the link in the description below. All right, so this example, say we've got a piece of two inch EMT conduit and we're trying to fit three two aught THHN conductors and three three aught THHN conductors. We need to know, can we fit all of those within that 40% cross-sectional area? So what we have to do is figure out, well, what is the area of each conductor what is the area of the entire conduit? And then what is the area of only 40% of that conduit? And then we can see if this plugs into this. So first off, we're gonna go look at our conductors and the conductors are in table five uh, in chapter nine. We're gonna go, uh, if you look at this table, there's a whole bunch of different insulation types that's organized by insulation types. So go to the THHN section and you see it's sized from 14 all the way up to 1000. I highlight mine because THHN, you're going to be using that all the time. So it's just easy to flip to that. So in THHN, we said that we're going to have two aught and three aught conductors. So first let's go to the two aught. Two aught, you go over to the inches squared column under the approximate area. We're dealing with area. All of this is dealing with area, not diameter or volume. So we go two aught, go over to the right. You see 0.2223, write that down. That means that that one conductor, that one two watt conductor is 0.2223 inches squared. That's the area of that conductor. Then we're gonna go to three watt, do the same thing. That's 0.2679. 
write that down. Now you're gonna multiply each one of those values by three. We have three two-aught conductors and three three-aught conductors. So all together, that should equal 1.4706, right? Now we have to go back to our conduit and check that that matches up with our conduit values. And we go to two inch under EMT, go over to the 40% column under inches squared, and two inches is 1.342. So no, those conductors will not fit per code. They may fit per busting your ass and pushing them, sure. But to code, you're not supposed to put that, uh, those in there. So uh, you would actually need to upsize your conduit you know, downsize your conductors, probably not gonna be downsizing your conductors if, if we're being honest, um, but you would need to get a bigger piece of conduit. All right, so next example, what if we have all of the same sized conductors in a piece of conduit? That's much easier, that is one table. So we can go to Annex C, Conduit and Tubing Fill Tables. The very first table, table C.1, is the maximum number of conductors in EMT. Um, this is another insulation chart, so figure out which type of insulation your conductor has. In this case, we're working with THHN. Um, we're going to do 3 aught, so 3 aught THHN. If you go down, I've highlighted my values already. Uh, 3 aught says under the 2 inch trade size column 5. So this whole chart calculates everything at a 40% value already. So we know that five three-aught conductors will fit at 40% area in a two-inch conduit. Now, we could actually sit and do the math. We could go back to table five, find THHN, look at three-aught, add the 0.2679 up uh, times five, and then we're gonna get the a value that's within the two-inch size of 1.342. So we know as long as you follow uh, table C1 in the uh, Annex C, that's already figured out at 40% area. So that's if you have all of the same conductors, it's a lot easier to figure out. The answer is five, it says right here. Last thing to talk about are nipples. Nipples allow you to go up to 60% area for your conduit fill, um, and you don't have to derate them. So if you look in chapter nine, under the, all the different notes, uh, note four says where conduit and tubing nipples have a maximum length not exceeding 24 inches are installed between boxes, cabinets, and similar enclosures. The nipples shall be permitted to be filled to 60% of their cross-sectional area and 310.15C1 adjustment factors need not apply. So that's pretty cool. It's two useful piece of information. A knows you get, you put more conductors in a nipple than you would in a normal piece of conduit. And number two, you don't have to add any D ratings to them. So, um, you're gonna do the same thing essentially for this that you would for uh, the very first example that we did with conductors of different size, um, but slightly different, less complicated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, table five. This is where all of our insulations are. We're gonna look under the THHN insulation and then we're gonna go down to three aught. If you move 3 aught over, you're going to find that it's 0.2679 inches squared. That is the area for one 3 aught conductor. Then we're going to go back to table 4. We're going to look at 2 inch EMT, but we're going to go to the 60% uh, column this time for nipples. And you'll find at 2 inches, we've got 2.013 inches squared. So all we have to do now is take the 2.013, the 60%, Divide that by 0.2679 for the, uh, the one conductor size, and you're gonna get seven and some change. So that means that you can put seven three-aught conductors in a nipple, whereas our example before, we could only put five three-aught conductors in a standard piece of conduit. That's two inches. So one last thing to note, uh, I, just a kind of a word of wisdom is make sure that you understand and that you read chapter nine under the under table one, the notes. Uh, the 2020 code book actually has 10 different notes under it, but the notes are really useful pieces of information. There's stuff in here like 
Um, what do you do if all of the conductors are the same size? What do you do if some of them are different? What do you do with grounding and bonding conductors? Do they all have to be calculated? Or do you only calculate one if you have multiple of them, like you would with derating? The answer is no. But it also talks about nipples. It talks about um, concentrically laid strands and uh, compact stranded conductors. There's all kinds of different conductors. And uh, it just gives you a lot of useful information about conduit fill. So I think at least familiarizing yourself with all of the notes and then familiarizing yourself with chapter nine, table one, table four, table five, and annex C, uh, all of those, then you'll have a really good understanding of what you need to be doing with these conductors and the conduit that you're trying to put them in. One more thing that I'm gonna mention, Ugly's book. All this information is in Ugly's. I tab mine so I've got a percent area table, I've got my conduit fill charts for you know EMT, whatever, all the different things, they're all in here. So again, I keep saying this, get one of these and use it. It's really handy just to keep it in your back pocket or uh, keep it in your tools or something like that, whereas you're not gonna bring this in everywhere that you go. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.